Hello there, everyone. Welcome back to some more Let's Play Under Rail. In the last episode, we, I believe, have finished exploring the vast majority of the lower Under Rail and below it sections, with the exception, of course, of Deep Caverns. Yeah, look at this. All the passages have been explored. All the cave systems, both the upper and lower caves, have been explored. And now we're here, again in Rail Crossing, in order to do the Dude's Quest. So let's go ahead and get started with that, shall we? Don't get in my way, miss. How's it going, man? Dude, you had another vision. Don't you remember anything? Or does your mind just malfunction every time it happens? Uh, dude? Right, the vision. I, you know, I've been getting a lot of visions involving you lately. I mean, before it was like twice a year, maybe, but now it's like all of them. You've been seeing me in visions before you met me. Duh. So what do I do in your visions? Well, don't remember most of them, come to think of it. You know, sometimes you do stupid things. Sometimes you do awesome things, you know? You know, man. Because it's you doing all that. Okay, what about this time? He checks himself for some brew, producing it a moment later with an ear-to-ear -ear smile. The table is now littered with bottles of mushroom brew. Ten for you, ten for him. The vision. It is difficult to explain this one. It requires a prepared mind. And to get to that point, you're gonna need some help, man. Are you ready? I'm ready. Drink with dude. You aren't sure how much time has passed, but what you are sure of is that the wretched gravity has now become your new nemesis. The vilest, most evil of all forces of nature simply won't leave you be. It's imperceptible claws are toying with you, prodding you, bullying you into kissing the unwashed floor, and what may be worst of all, its ultimate objective seems to be to deprive you of your precious liquor by puppeteering your hands into spilling it all over the table. Dude seems to be resisting this force's devious influence, a stoic sieged by terror itself. The passing patrons observe your struggle, but the more you feel their stares, the less you give a rat's ass. This guy appears out of thin air. His lips move, producing sound. Everything he's saying is slurred. Words fuse into a very long one. You still nod. He seems familiar, maybe. But hold it. He's talking to Dude. The Dude answers in a foreign language. The man leaves. Hey. As soon as you speak, a brew appears on the table before you. You feel a sudden, overwhelming thirst. Never mind. Oh, that was us. Never mind. Your head is light. Your body is heavy. The gravity is tipping your balance in its own favor. You'd punch it if you could, but it hurt the last time you tried. Pain. That annoying guy materializes again. Can't this man speak properly? He doesn't seem pleased. His scowl speaks volumes. His words are meaningless. You mumble something to him. His stare shines brighter than an exploding pileup of a thousand trains. Dude takes over and extinguishes the flames. Unwilling, the man nods and disappears. Laugh. More bottles of ambush you as you glance at the table. Seductive, enticing, marvelous. Great! Continue drinking. A heated argument interrupts your drunken serenity. It's that man again. Blast him! You show him... Wait, you show him. Dude, you show him. But after a mere minute or eternity of arguing, the man slams his fist against the table, silencing Dude as though he were a small child before he was scolded by his father. Dude looks at you, then at the angry man, then at you again. He speaks to you. Everything's all jumbled up, slurred, muddled, garbled, misarticulated, incoherent, senseless, confusing. Damn, he's drunk! You do manage to make out the gist of it. You okay, man? I'll s survive The dude turns to the man while pointing it 
while pointing at you with both hands and smiling. The man, still suspicious, stares at both of you before retreating. What was that all... Oh, uh, that about, dude? And just like that, more bottles appear before you. Never mind. Your nose is full of dust while the pool of your own drool feels warm on your face. You raise your head only to slam it against the ceiling. Ceiling it is not, though, but the underside of a table. As you slowly regain your consciousness, a voice from above you beckons. Can you hear me? You find your way from underneath the table and climb up to your chair. Then you sit down. Hey, man. How are you feeling? Good. Nod. Glad to hear it, man. And that means it's working. That means it's working, man. I was scared for a moment, you know? And not because of the, like, things that happened, but because we ran out of brew. I had two more on me, and those tasted odd, man. Maybe they were spoiled. But once we went through that, I had to, like, get some more. So, what happens now? We're exactly where we want to be. We have been elevated to the summit of human consciousness. In this state, our minds are capable of seeing over the thick mists of our earthly senses and understand that over our reality is so much different from how we normally perceive it. And that it is not the only one. New curves, new details, new rules, new worlds. And once our minds finally fathom our reality in its true form, only then will our eyes be able to see the rifts in its very fabric through which we can reach its every corner. Well, maybe not every corner, but at least five, or even beyond. This is crucial, man. Look around and tell me, how does everything appear to you? It's all a bit blurry and shaky. There, that's what we need. Now, we now perceive the world alike. You ask me what you did in this vision. I will show you, and you will do it again. Show, don't tell. Some robe geezer at the station always used to yell, and he was right. He drank battery acid and died a week after that, but he was right. That's nice. What's the first thing we need to do? Dude. The thing is, the vision. In it I saw homes, caves, a lot of walking, ingredients of some kind, a journey. You and me, man, together on a journey. What do we have to do? Do we have to? Man, what have you been drinking? You do not ignore a vision. You do not say to it, well, vision, like, no. You do not kick it in the shin and run away like a little girl and hide in a hopper's crevice. If a vision shows you taking a journey, you better make sure you take that damn journey, man. You catch my, like, drift? Y yeah. What's our first step? It's simple. We find homes. Our homes? No, my homes. I have lived in many homes, like this many. He begins raising his digits, one at a time. Once he reaches five, he stops. More than this many, yeah. And what are we looking for in these homes? Look, man, listen. The thing about visions is that some of them can get pretty fuzzy. The longer they are, the fuzzier they get. Mostly, it's like... You know, you ought to do something, but you don't know what that is or why. But you always feel like you're doing the right thing once you're actually there. And then it all makes sense. It's the intrigue, man, and the unknown which makes the vision so... intriguing and unknown. You know what I mean, man? Therefore, I don't know what exactly we're going to find there, but for sure it's going to lead us to our next location, our next step in the vision. Probably. Okay, follow me. We're going to start with the core. That's the only one I can remember right now. Follow dude. This is the place, man. Here we go. What in the filthy barrels? Hey, dude's mom. Huh. What, what's cooking? What? That's not my mother, man. Hey! 
An ancient, shriveled woman angrily waves her ladle at you. Pipe working sons of drop offs! If I wanted some zone ass bastards to barge into my home, I would have never left the drop zone. You boys leave this place now, you! Or else I'm gonna open a can of zone out and show you how this grandma dominates pipe liquors like you. Beat it now, y'all! Excuse me, man, but this place used to be mine, you know? So you're actually a barge into my place, you. the old woman? You seem to, like, find something important and we're, like, gone. What you say, Dross Face? Your place? Get out of here! You too, Barrel Stuffer! That's intimidating. Unless you... You want to be the main ingredient to that, uh... Soup you're making. You're going to let us search this place. Her defenses buckle under pressure, and her piercing gaze turns dull. All right, all right. Just be quick and don't make no mess, dig? Or else... She threatens you with her ladle. Dude looks around the room. Man, this place looks like so much different. Now let's start searching, and if you find anything that looks important, it probably is. Let's go, man, let's go. Nod slowly, that's not the fall over. Okay, now we can open shelves and look at what's in them, but the moment we take anything, we're in combat. And this place is full of things we can examine. Let's get the dusty box, for example. Nothing but three pairs of socks in this box. Red, blue, and white. America! Yeah! There's a broken tile here. Nothing but cockroaches underneath this tile. You find numerous small items between the cushions, none of which seem to be the reason dude brought you here, you feel. There's a dead cockroach in the stew. The extensive damage confirms your suspicions. The monitor is broken. One of the spice labels reads Bormusk. Other than that, these are just basic spices. You keep those filthy paws away from me, you pipe jamming scum, or I'll... Lots of food and morphine in the container, but we don't need any of that. Nothing behind it but a spider family. Aww. Good to see that it's, uh, this place is co cohabited. Nothing but junk in this pile of junk. Yep. Besides being horribly unpractical in this state, there was nothing odd about this mirror. So, we can examine all this stuff. However, the thing we need to examine doesn't show up when you, when you ask the game to show you things you can examine. It's this. This slightly raised segment of the wall here. This panel looks somewhat odd to your restless eyes. After staring at it for a while, swaying from left to right like an indecisive pendulum, you notice that this panel is slightly convex in comparison to the rest. Touch it. The panel is loosely secured to the wall and could be removed without too much trouble, you judge. And for some strange reason, the thought of riding it down a flight of stairs races through your mind. It provokes a mischievous smile, but you quickly forget what it was you were smiling about. Remove the panel. You got something? You can do it! Kick it! What are you two doing there? Kick it again! Oh. Hey! Easy as pie. You place the panel aside, hordes of creepy crawlies instantly scatter. Within a few moments, the wall behind the panel was clear. Except... The safe! Oh, I haven't seen you in years. Yeah, that's what we're looking for, man. I don't have the key anymore. How... How do I open it, then? Well, knowing myself, there are two possible options. Either I hid the key somewhere in this room, or I locked the safe with the key inside. Don't ask, but that has happened a few times. So either look for the key, or try picking the lock or something. Out to... The... the damn it. Try. The key is also not in any of the things we can bring up with the tab key. It is in this corner. And the only reason I know this is because I've done this before. And the first time I did this, this I found. This I had to look up online to figure out where this key was located. There's a small key hidden in one of the cracks. You pick it up. By the way, all of our base attributes have been reduced by four. Cheers! Heavy... Um, 
what's it called? We are being affected by the by the brew. These are our current stats. We are not capable of combat. Our strength makes our armor and our sledgehammer impossible to wield at this moment. An unsaturated psionic catalyst. And I found an unstrapitated psionic catalyst. There was nothing else inside. An unsaturated site. That's it! His eyes turned distant. It's all coming back to me, man. To enter a reality rift, your mind mustn't only be capable of perceiving the rift, but also of safely traveling through it. Only if the mind knows which reality lies behind the rift will it be able to reach it. Otherwise, your body will pass freely, but the mind will stay behind. You will be split. Your mind will fizzle out since there is no brain to maintain its existence, while your aimless body will roam the world beyond until it rots. In the end, both will be joined again in like nothingness. But even if you're properly prepared, fragments of your mind, memories, and emotions might still stay behind, and you won't be able to get them back. These fragments will be lost forever, I think. Man, my head hurts from all this remembering. But what is important is that the unsaturated psionic catalyst is a component, an ingredient, yeah. Necessary in preparing the mind for rift walking. Yeah, rift walking. That's the term. The brew lets you see. The catalyst lets you enter. How do you know all these things? And have you been rift walking yourself before? I'm the dude. I know things. My head is like this bony bowl of serospinal stew with a large nervous dumpling in the middle. Yet I am rarely nervous. You know what I mean, man? And can't you see I've been working on this for... Who knows how many years? I must have rift walked too. Like, yeah. Trust me. And the visitors? Always trust the visitors. Oh, uh, the visions. Not the visitors. Maybe trust both of them. I dig. I, I dig. So, are we done here? Yeah, man. Just make sure you bring the catalyst with you. We're gonna need it. What's our next stop? Uh, yeah, man. I thought the answer to that would be here. Oh well, we'll do some walking until it dawns on me or something. You ready to go? I'm ready. Okay, now, uh, how exactly do we get inside this place? You know, we were very fortunate I fell and hit my head on that concrete slab or else I would have never remembered this place existed, ever. So many memories are just, like, flooding in now, man. Man. So, you used to live here too? Used to. There are many reasons why I leave my homes. People wanting to kill me, robotic ghosts following me around, nightmarish creatures appearing in my house, it being too damn noisy. Usual stuff, man. I can't remember why I left this place in particular, though. Must have been the bandits throwing grenades down at me or something, because I remember... I remember one time waking up to a grenade blast. Yeah. Anyway, let's go in. I can't wait to see my old place again. Can't wait to see what moved in after you left. Don't jinx it, man. Did you learn anything I taught you? Never jinx. Never. Okay, now, follow me. Man, I remember it all. This place used to be so comfy. I had space to relax, to work, to sleep in peace and quiet. Well, except when Obsidian Ants decide to invade. There's my desk. There's my workshop and sleeping quarters. There's my old sofa, my fridge. And my room. I didn't have a rug here. Ah, and there's my lab. My lab! What we're after has got to be in there. Oh, yeah. Damn it. I need a key card. I think I... I think I even saw that in the vision. Yeah. 
Yeah, damn it. Why do I always have to lock everything and not bring the keys with me? The key card's gotta be around here somewhere. Well, take a look around. I'm gonna stand here and figure out how to process all these memories from the past. It's hard work, man. Hard work. You can see now that the intoxication is now reduces all our stats by two. With an eight strength, though, I don't think we can... Let's think here. Oh! We can get away with wearing all our armor now, so we won't have any armor... We won't have any penalties to our action points if it comes down to it. Two side boosters and six mushroom brew. It's a Biocorp Electronics North TX-1000 printer. Doesn't seem to be working anymore, though. You saw one of these in Dude's place in Core City. Seems like he really likes them. Wow. 106 and 101 psionic modulator. An old key card. There's Biocorp written on it. Albeit with a few letter letters... With a few letter being barely readable? The rest of the card has been completely scratched off. There's even one burn mark on the side. This is what Dude wants. There's this card piece of paper inside. You pick it up. There are some numbers written on it. Okay, and I'm gonna... One second, I need to move the game over a bit so I can get to my notepad. Thank you, Microsoft. Screw you, too. Okay, so... 76, 89, 25. 76, 89, 25. Let's talk with the dude before we begin, begin exploring the rest of the place. Found the card, man? Here you go. I remember this. It's one of the old cards I had on me since forever. Hey, I remember programming it to work with this lock. I've done a lot of ad hoc stuff during my lifetime, like the time I found myself in a burrow nest with only a lighter loaf of root bread. Man, dude's gotta think fast in those kinds of situations. Can you open the door now, dude? Yeah, right. Journey continues. <laughs> as soon as Duke closes the door, growling, grunting, shrieking, and a thunderous pounding violates your eardrums. As if the pounding in your head from all the brew wasn't enough. The creatures, disoriented by their unfortunate fate and your intoxication combined, are trying to break down the door. It holds for now. Meanwhile, Dude is bluntly staring through you, slowly nodding. Yeah, that's why. His quiet voice nearly gets drowned by the monstrous tantrum coming from the other side. An earthquake woke me up. Then I heard the mutants. He pauses. Then I ran away in my pajamas. No, wait. I was naked. Oh. Did you see me kill all those mutants in your vision? No. Or else I would have known there were mutants here, man. Think, like... Think. But we've got to get rid of them in any case. Let me at him, dude. I'll show him who's boss. Under the influence, man? Brew's good for a lot of things, but fighting ain't one of them. You nearly gouged your eye out with that rusty bar in the core. Now you want to fight mutants? We just continue pounding at the door. See? You're pissed off more than us. And whoever is more pissed off is likely to win a fight, trust me. And, like, there's more of them than us. And they got claws and acid bellies. I mean, like, I respect your dedication, but let's try to find a different way to overcome this. You with me, man? So, we can solve this in two ways. We can try fighting the mutants. We do have greatly reduced stats at the moment. But we might be able to still win... There was another way to solve the puzzle, though. Let's see. You got a point. Got any ideas? Well, there's this console here, but it ain't working properly, man. He observed it for a few seconds before continuing. Yeah, yeah, I think a bunch of zappers, zap spiders, coil spiders' tiny cousins got inside and messed up with the electronics. Many buggers of annoyance and doom. Now the characters are all jumbled up because of it. I may have even figured out how to use it despite the problem, but I don't know anymore. What does the console do? Can you remember? No, probably something important, but I can't know everything, man. My head can't contain all the knowledge of this world. 
Right. I'll take a look at it. A steady growl seeps through the cracks in the wall, and it gets louder and louder. Uh, now that I think about it, it might not be safe to stand here. I think I'll, like, wait outside. How about you give me the key card to the lab? Oh, yeah, just don't do anything stupid like open the door before you figure out a way to take care of the mutants. Don't want to see you dead, in, in a vision or otherwise. Here you go, man. Good luck. Now we can open this door and kill the mutants if you if you want to give that a shot. But again, these are our current stats. So I think we'll take a look around instead. And it, and yes, by the way, there is a good amount you can do to help you kill the mutants if you do want to fight them. I think I fought them with like two of my characters, and it is possible to do it. It's full of all kinds of tools, all right. Some barely one piece, some good as new. Each of the three bottles is marked with a number. They are 79, 55, and 11. 79, 55, 11. There's a few WT2C rounds still in the internal magazine. You pick them up. Still reeks of mushroom brew and pork. And the I need a power box. Come on, Tex, go away. The meter shows 67, 33, 82. Okay, one. We have three sets of numbers. To the best of my recollection, those numbers are always the same. So I could cut the recording, go back to my original playing through of this, and watch the answers I pick. But I think instead, we'll try this on screen, because I don't think it will take too long for me to figure it out. Before you is a dusty console displaying oddly corrupted content. Namely, you see lines of, of letters and numbers, yet these are arranged in a way that conveys no apparent meaning. And you are positive that this isn't due to the state you're in, rather that it is an actual reflection of some kind of malfunction. Before the display, the console contains a few simple buttons labeled on, off, reset, activate, and deactivate. And it seems like these buttons, too, haven't been touched in years, judging by the thick coating of dust covering them. So, we need, I, I need my calculator. I was so proud of myself because I solved this puzzle without any assistance. So, the way this works is that one of these is going to give us a number that's equal to, I want to say 76, 79, or 67. The way we have to figure it out is we have to add up all the numbers in a line. So right here we have 1 and 1 is 2, oh, sorry, that's 11, we have 11 plus 1 is 12. 12 plus 17 is 29. 29 plus 4 is 33. 33 is 1. Oh, I said the wrong thing at the start. 33 is one of the numbers we're looking for. There was one of the combination of numbers was 67, 33, and 82. Now, I could add the rest of these up, but I'm going to go ahead and select this as our first number. Actually, I, I I think all this does is remove it. Let's let's leave that here for a second. Hold on, I'm I'm messing up explaining this. These you have to enter three of them. I don't think they change. So when we select this one, yep, all, all the rest of them remain the same. So we we see a 33, and that hints heavily that we're looking for the 67, 33, 82 combination. So let's add up these numbers next. 37. Plus 40. Plus 5. Is 82. Perfect. So this is one of the numbers we want. This is the other number we want. And now we need to find something that equals 67. I'm going to jump past a few of these. Let's look at this one. 23 plus 31 is 54. 54 plus 13 is 67. Okay, so let's go ahead and select 6, 1, 2. We get a bunch of gibberish on screen, but... 
Oh, did I mess that up? I did. Oh no! Was I wrong? Was that not 67? Or was that not 82? 23 plus 31 is 54 plus 13 is 67. 11 plus 1 is 12, 29, 33, 30, oh, I selected 2, I should have selected 1 again, I think, 37 plus 40 is 77 plus 5, oh, I'm wrong, this is embarrassing, alright, then I'm gonna cut this, I'll be right back, everyone. Okay, one, so I, I'm not wrong, but this this confused me greatly the last time I did this, too. Do you see this one right here? That's not a one. That's a lowercase l. Screw you, game. So this is not the number we need. So we do need this one. 23, 31, 13 is 67. Next, we need to enter something that's equal to 33. 12... Plus 10, plus 11. That is 33. Then, we have to choose 37, 40, and 5. And now, we get this statement, which means that we have solved that part of the puzzle. The first of the three series of three numbers, sequences, has been entered correctly. Next. We need to find a 76, a 79, an 89, a 55, a 25, or an 11 amongst these entries. And once we find one of them, we'll know which of the sequences we're looking to complete next. So let's take a peek. So I see a 99 here. That's not used by any of them, so we can skip that. 39 plus 21 is 60. 60 plus 16 is 76. So that must be the first one. So that would be 76 is number 8. So let's go ahead and just select it. Next, we need an 89 and a 25. There's a 96. It's not what we want. Point 15 plus 10 is 25 plus 9 is 30. No, it's not it. 8, no, that can't be it. 7, that's only 20. 2 plus 53 is 55 plus 34 is 89. So we're looking for a 25 now. So that number is too big. This number is too small. This must be it. 8 plus 16 is 24, plus 1 is 25. And we get another symbol. Perfect. Alright, so now we're looking for a 79, a 55, and an 11. So let's see. So here's 79. Is that right? Yep, immediately. 30, 39 plus 40. Then we need a 55. That one's not it. That's too big. I see a 50 right up front. This one sounds like this might be it. 14 plus 37 is 40, uh, 54. Plus 4 is 55. And then finally we have an 11. That one should be pretty kind of easy. 4 plus 3 is 7. Plus 4 is 11. Oh, nope. I messed it up. Okay, so one more time. So... 39 plus 40. I was hoping I wouldn't have to write this one down, but I am going to. 55. Let's see. 5 plus 18. Plus 23 plus 19. 42. That one's not it. That one can't be it. That's bigger. 
14 plus 37 plus 4. Yeah, 55. That one's this one has to be it. So that's number 5. And now we need to 11. 1, 1, and 2, 4. This has got to be it. 4, 3, and 4. No, it's not. Am I getting this number? Am I getting the 79 wrong? 39, that's an L. Oh, there's a 2 in there. No, this is this is wrong. It's not 4 to start. Uh, 22, 33 is 55. Uh, this is it, then. 22, 33, and 24 is 79. 5, is that right? No. Okay, all my other notes are now wrong. Uh, this one is 55. And then... This one is 11. There we go. That's a lot more like it. Let's go ahead and activate it. The pipes passing through the walls begin to rattle violently, stabilizing after a couple of seconds. And then you hear the frigid hissing of the gas filling the room across. And so that will slowly kill all of them off, everyone. They will effectively freeze death in there. So that's it. So one more time, for uh, for you watching at home, the you need to find the three sequences which are around here somewhere, and then you need to find a matching sequence in the console here, and you need to enter that sequence in the in the correct order. Obviously, I'm I'm probably messing that up that ex <laughs> explanation terribly. <laughs> And I do not think that these numbers have ever been different. I think they're always the same. So alternatively, what would I write down? Alternatively, for the first two sequences, you want to answer... Actually, I didn't write down the second sequence, the, the last one. For the first sequence, you want to enter 6, 1, 2. For the second sequence, you want to enter 8, 5. And then you have to look at the numbers to see which of them total up to be 25. And for the last sequence, I don't know what I entered. We'll start hearing them scream to death soon. To my knowledge, you're not under any time limit to complete this either. Uh, doors, are, I believe, are indestructible, and the door will they break down a wall. So, you can just keep trying it as much as you like. Or alternatively, if you can't solve it, you can open that. You can open the door and fight them anyway. If you're going to do that, depending on what type of character, I'd probably recommend fighting right in the doorway so only one of them can attack you at a time. But they will <laughs> spit at you as well from from a distance. So this many of them might be a little tricky. Oh, as you can see off screen, I went and double checked the number. I thought I was, I thought I wrote down the one. I thought I wrote something down that was not the correct one. Okay, let's go ahead and deactivate this. Open the door to help it let it thaw out a little faster. I really should just write down these numbers somewhere. Maybe I have that information saved on my computer? As I go looking... No, I don't. Hmm... Darn it, that sucks. <laughs> that really sucks. I thought I wrote down these at some point, so I'd never have to actually 
have to math these out again. Bah. Later on in the game, but there's another two puzzles, at least two more puzzles, that will require some amount of math to solve them. Uh, math might be the wrong word. It's a good amount of logic to solve them. That will be the Deep Cavern Musion puzzle. And the... Oh, uh, I forget what it's called. Symphonic puzzle to get the voice weapon in the DLC expedition. It gives you a unique type of laser weapon or energy weapon. It reminds me of the weirding way that they had in the Dune movies. I don't think I actually care about owning. Hold on. Those acid glands. So I don't need these. A doctor's coat, a groin guard, and morphine. The morphine we want. The rest can stay in here. There's a bottle inside. Probably a mushroom brew. There's some bright red tissue inside. What could it be? Looks like there's some kind of gas grenade inside. Wouldn't want to break this one. It's empty. It's empty. There's some odd puffy looking fungi inside. It's frozen solid though. You're alive, man! And the mutants? They are not. Alright. Guess I shouldn't have underestimated you. You're like Holy one, tough guy. But let's go. We gotta check the lab. I've already checked the lab. A few cryo chambers and the, a locker was all I saw. And inside the locker, I found some morphine, a lab coat, and for some strange reason, a groin guard. A dude's gotta keep his man boulders safe at all times. This is in this terrible world, a rat hound could bite them off, a lurker could chop them off, and a train could run you over. And that includes your sensitives. It's testicular genocide waiting to happen, man. You gotta be prepared for it. So wherever I go, I make sure I got protection. Now, what else did you want to say was in that locker? Morphine in a lab coat. That's it! Again, as in his house in Core City, dude's gaze turns distant. Once you prepare the mind, enter a rift. The mind is safe, but then your body is the one that risks while you're walking through the guts of the universe, trying to, like, reach the exit rift. Uh, that's the scientific name for it, exit rift. Anyways, untold horrors await those who enter. Abrasive winds will tear your flesh away, toxic fumes will incinerate your lungs, and blinding darkness, darkness will totally mess up your eyes. Powerful radiation will bar your every cells, your very cells, malforming them into these, like, tumor-manufacturing organic machines. But it's not just like that. There are these living things there, too, hiding in the shadows. You'll be walking this, like, dark, desolate landscape. It surrounds you from all sides, man, because the sky and the ground are one and the same. The air is, like, alive, and out of it claws, teeth, blades, tentacles, and sometimes even wings take shape. Those will cut you, bite you, pierce you, whack you, flap at you, and do all kinds of deadly unpleasantries. And you will hear nothing but demonic shrieking and the sound of your flesh being torn apart. If you're not prepared, your body will be destroyed. It's not good, man. But there is a way to avoid that, too. Morphine. It relieves the pain. And if you don't feel pain, it means the body is not getting hurt. Yeah. Yeah, it's logical. And it feels like pulling a decayed tooth after anesthetizing yourself with lots of brew. You feel something moving in your jaw, cracking and all that, but no pain. You know all that? It's the same once you enter a rift. You feel all these things around you pushing and nudging, but there is no pain, so you're not getting hurt. Of course, the difference is you don't end up missing a tooth there, or like skin, flesh, and bones. Seems like we're making some good progress then, dude. The brew lets you see, the cattle lets you enter, the morphine lets you survive. There's one more, man. It's at the tip of my tongue, I can't... He takes an empty bottle and hits himself in the head. And again, after a further pause, he continues. Uh, nothing. Well, it worked the last time I tried. Ugh. 
What are those cryo chambers for, dude? It hurts, man. What I caves? It's in the caves. Yeah. He draws a map in the air with his finger and mumbles to himself. East, north, left. I'm, I'm getting tired of going around under rail, dude. Yeah, man, sorry, but we gotta figure this all out. We've done a lot. We're still in the home phase of the journey. According to the vision, that is. And if the vision shows it, it must be true. But we're getting closer and closer to the end, man. I'll give you all the answers once we get to the final home, I promise. We gotta rush now as the brew is slowly evaporating from us and we still need it in. It's like the worst thing in the world to lose something when you need it the most. You know what I mean? Oh, and don't forget to bring that morphine with you. He looks around with noticeable sadness in his eyes. I hate to leave this place so quickly. I've done a lot of work here. A lot of... You ready to go? I'm ready. Great. Now get ready to boost me up so I can reach those ladders. Then I'll give you a hand. And no, I won't drop you again, man. I promise. Sorry I dropped you again, man, but we're finally here. I fell on my head, but we're finally here. It's like strange how remembering old memories makes you feel so good. I remember vomiting right here after one nasty crawler stung me. Oh. And then I... It's not here, man. It's over there. Yeah, sorry, man. Follow me. Here it is. Here's what? The entrance, man. Don't you see it? No. Let the brew inside you help you. Observe that wall from the summit of your consciousness. But I'm feeling pretty sober now. Damn it, man. Just take a better look again. See? There was still brew within you, man. I gotta hand it to you, dude. You live in the oddest of places. Well, you just gotta live somewhere, and all the good places have been either taken over by people with lots of guns, or creatures with lots of teeth, or psi abilities. Besides, seclusion allows for peace and quiet, but you never want to be too remote. How else are you gonna acquire stuff, huh? Anyway, how about you go and take a look inside? I'll wait here. Uh... I know the drill. Catch you later. Good luck in there, man. We're getting closer and closer to the bottom of it all. Now you'll note this time, we don't have any of the brute in us. It's finally all gone. You can actually then probably also go ahead and actually eat some food. I said actually twice there. I remember this part. <laughs> Let's go ahead. Uh, we'll get some fire up here. Activate our shield and round the corner. See these cats? These cats are all horrible monsters. Shield held just barely against all of them. Now, how many can we get inside the fire? We'll kill those because they're all together. We'll switch to our dagger. I think we can kill a single cat per hit. 
We'll sprint. We'll use an adrenaline. I'm not getting lucky with the attacks today. We'll hide from the up from that one cat. Oh! Right! There's no danger here. The cat's lasers can't penetrate our armor. And I can't target this cat. It's completely invulnerable to me. Alright, not bad. That was actually... I didn't even need to worry whatsoever about that fight, did I? Let's recharge our emitter. Awesome. And the cats. Yep. They have laser emitters in them. Some of them do, at least. Others have hearts. We want those hearts. The first time I did this with Garrett, I had a bad feeling about the cats. And I think I threw a grenade that didn't end up in the right spot, and thus I died to them. It was hilarious. It's been scratched to oblivion, yet this monitor is still upright only because its base has been screwed into the counter. Yeah, another Barcelona chair. What does Barcelona even mean? So many mushrooms have grown inside that you could just add some water and start a fire underneath it. You spin the blades with your finger, but alas. Okay, so we're not going to take the hearts with us at the moment. Oh, I forgot. I, picked, I bought this. Let's leave these behind as well. Ah, Mid-quality stuff. Decent amount of hammer, 93 quality. Some more mushroom brew. Hello. Some repair kits. We'll take those. Mid level modulators. Sonic field counter. It's stuck at the top of the range. Nothing you do has any effect on the device. A bed surrounded by liquor shelves. Yep. Dude used to live here. Two morphine and two more saturated catalysts. Most of the notes are just scribblings, but there is one that reads, Do not overcharge the cats. It appears that new elements have been added to the table, but you can't figure out what they are due to damage and grind. Napalm C. Geometrin. Taurine and some antidotes. Something moved inside when you knocked at the gas tank. A bucket. Which we can't look at. Okay, let's leave Napalm C behind, because we won't need that at the moment. And I think we need... Th oh, we need three brews... Three brews, three satellite catalysts, three morphines, and three geometrins, and that will get us some juice. All right, what am I talking about? Let's find. Let's uh, let's show you. And it looks like we won't actually be clearing uh, this quest in this episode. We're going to, only going to be we're going to be ending right after the dude creates the juice for us, but then we'll be doing the Grey Army base in the next episode. Hey, man, found any evils inside? Laser cats. Laser cats, yeah, yeah. Uh, you, uh, took care of them, right? Yep. High energy vermin. So it's like, is it to go inside? Yep. Well, like, let's go. You helped dude start a fire in the barrel in front of you with the items you found in his long abandoned home. Now you both stand there, observing the disorderly dance of the flames you've just brought to life. This turbulent interplay is ever-changing, sometimes fierce, sometimes timid. 
and where some flames rise above the rest, others retreat low and disappear. But as long as there is something to keep it alive, the fire will keep on burning. As you absorb the much needed warmth after traversing harsh and cold, all these primal emotions start digging their way up from the abyssal depths of your inner being. You feel safe, you feel calm, you feel enthralled. Right now, you need nothing more than the warm caress, the music of combustion, and the tranquilizing light display. And if you feed the fire, and take care of the fire, you generally feel that it will take care of you as well. I'm hungry. Du pulls out a small metal skewer with some hopper meat on it and puts it over the flame. Got some for you too if you want it, man. Where'd you get that meat? Don't remember. It's been a while. Want it? No thanks. Oh well. I did some snooping around here. We'll wait for the meat to roast, and then we'll continue with the journey, man. I saw it in the vision. I'm standing here roasting some hopper, while you're standing right there. Everything's like according to the vision so far, so don't worry. Uh, we're through most of the phases. We've been in my homes, caves... He looks around and nods. Ingredients. The last one's gotta be here, so it's all progressing slowly. So it all seems to be revolving around us going through these reality rifts. Yeah, you see, man? I know some people think I'm a bit on the other side of the rails. I can see it in people, man. But I do everything for a reason. The reasons guide me, and not a single one of them has ever let me down. Now, I'm not gonna turn tail if I see something I don't like, like. Even if we enter a rift and end up in the middle of a war between intergalactic sentient centipedes and crustacean-like fungoid monsters, and end up being blown to tiny charred bits, it's for a reason. You always know the right things to say, dude. Thanks, man. Did you happen to see us after we went through a rift in the vision? I most remember seeing you. I don't recall seeing anything too specific. The whole vision was a bit fuzzy, man, but we pulled through. So far, things just revealed themselves as we go along, and every event becomes like crystal clear in my brain once I actually see it. Yeah, everything as I had seen in the vision got clear. So far, and it's like, oh, the meat's done. The dude stares at the sizzling meat for a second before slowly pulling off a piece of it from the skewer and putting it in his mouth. Not even a second passes and he spits it out into the fire. Ugh! Damn, damn, damn it to hell! This is the worst hopper I've ever tasted. I rather like licked uncovered rust off a shack in the junkyard than eat this, man. He throws the skewer with the end with the rest of the meat into the fire. Burn! He then turns to us. Well, man, we gotta continue the journey. We got we got some rest, but now it's time to get going. His eyes scan the place. Man, it hasn't changed much since I left, except that everything here smells like cat excrement. Used to smell of brew. All things have changed. Well, you know what you gotta do. Go and search the place for the final ingredient we need, man. It's here. I found some chemicals in your desk. Taurine, some napalm C, and geometrin. Any one of those last ingredient we need? Taurine. That's for the heart. The Apalm C? That's for, like, incinerating stuff. Geometrin. Geometrin. Geometrin! That's it! If you know how it looks, you see it. If you know where you're going, it will be there. If you feel no pain, you cannot get hurt. Once you reach an exit rift, you will not be able to pass. It's the surface tension of the living air. The living air. You fall into it when you enter, so you easily break the surface, like jumping in the lake. But if you want to get out, it's like an ant stuck in a drop of water. Dark water. Deadly water. Water that wants to mutilate you. You'll be stuck inside, watching a whole different world that you can't reach. And then the morphine loses its effect. That's why you need the geometrin. It is toxic, and it hurts what is living. It will hurt the living air, but it won't hurt you because you don't feel pain. The damage done to the living air will create a temporary vacuum. But that doesn't suffocate you or anything like that, like in our reality. In the... the... the in-between. Yeah, that's the name. The in-between. In there, vacuum is freedom from the living air. There is no tension anymore, so you can walk through the exit rift and reach your destination. The brew lets you see, the catalyst lets you enter, the morphine lets you survive, the geometrin lets you escape. That's everything we need. We're gonna be doing some rift walking. So all we need to do is mix those things up and we're good to go, right? First of all, we need two juices. One for you, one for me. So that's two bottles of brew. Two measures of unsaturated psionic catalyst, two of morphine, and two of geometrin. Yeah. Juices. Yeah, that's how it's called, the juice. 
You mix all these things up and you get the juice. You drink the juice, then you rift walk. But now, how to like mix the ingredients is a real issue now. You add too much morphine, you faint in the in-between dimension. You add too little brew, you can't see the exit rift. You add too much countless, your mind moves faster than your body does. You add battery acid, you die. Did you keep some notes on how to make the juice? You're asking me after all we've been through? Like, what the hell, man? I don't know, man. Maybe I did. Maybe I didn't. Did you check and run the lab or in the super concealed crack in the wall no one could ever find? I found a stack of them in the lab. Most of them look like long-winded scribblings to me. Except for one that says not to overcharge the cats. And that's damn good advice. Not as good as, like, not to drink battery acid, but damn good nevertheless. As for the long-winded scribblings, I'll check them out, man, but I doubt it's there. Recipes. Now, those I usually write simply and concisely. Like, for example, 17 milligrams of unsaturated cyanic catalyst, 55 milligrams of morphine, 1 milligram of geometrin, 300 milliliters of mushroom brew. You take the catalyst and... I got it, man! I know how to make the juice! I just remember the whole recipe! Oh, I'm good! I'm good! Okay, listen now. We got recipe for the juice... We got all the ingredients, but... And that's one big but, but... But what comes next could be, like, anything. The vision got pretty blurry at this point. I know we got a rift walk, but I don't know where that's gonna take us. So if you want to take a break and, like, and stock up or have a cold brew, do it now. Come see me when you're ready, man. I'll be, like, in the lab. I've got all the ingredients we need to make the juice right here. I'm ready to search for rifts. Awesome, man. Let's begin. There, the equipment's ready. Okay, man, place the brew. Now hand me the catalyst. Now the morphine. Now wipe my forehead. Okay, okay, give me the geometrin. <laughs> we just look at him, raising our eyebrow, I suppose. The juice, yes. I like did it. We did it, man. He hands you your bottle of the juice. There you go, man. Now, when you drink this, Know that it could make you a bit sick or partially paralyzed, but only until you get used to it. Could, not should. Okay, I'll go first. He presses the bottle against his lips and pours the juice into his mouth. A few gulps later, the bottle is empty. Ugh, it's warm, but my eyes, they're open again, man. Naturally, you observe him for any side effects, but they are absent. It's as though he drank a normal, run-of-the-mill bottle of mushroom brew. Now, just as you stare at him inquisitively, so does he stare at you blankly. What? No sickness or paralysis. I didn't say I could get, like, sick or paralyzed. You could get sick or paralyzed. My body can take any alcohol-based liquid, or solid matter, actually, and it won't hurt me one bit. But you, man, on the other hand, you gotta be careful. I guess now's my turn to take the juice. Yeah, after that, we're gonna be looking for a rift. I think there's one right here in my home, but the brew kinda lost its effect, so I'm not sure. But I think I saw this, like, well, rift, man. So get that in your system and let's start searching. You'll know a rift when you see it. How long does this effect last? He shrugs. We'll see. It's not like you can just instantly and explicitly know how long something's gonna last. It varies from person to person, man. Let's go find that rift. Okay, dude. The game saves just in case this is beyond you. We should be able to handle this. And I can see it from here. Right here are the symbols of a rift. Keep on searching, man. It lasts for 15 minutes. Oh, it also increases our perception by one. Interesting. You see a small, bright, flat-looking ripple in the otherwise three-dimensional space around you. I didn't realize it did that. I would have been drinking... I would have made a bunch of juice with Garrett before I went down into the deep caverns and drank it before I began using my crossbow. 
Attune yourself to the rift. You fix your eyes on the rippling energies of the rift and focus your mind on it. You can almost feel your consciousness flowing from your forehead into the rift on a wave of juice. For a brief moment, with a deafening shriek, your mind is flooded with countless images, all indiscernibly mushed up into mental white noise. You snap out of it with a gasp. You see the rift more clearly now. It beckons you closer. Step inside of it. Safe. That's so good, good guys. Black or more, red or black, zeev that trebat, eh? Sog vas ligvno stops marsh. Travin, Travin. Nauseated, you step out of the wavering rift as it closes behind you. You try your hardest to remember and make sense of your journey through the in-between. What you felt and saw, but it is simply incomprehensible. You just have this feeling that a lot of time has passed. Regardless, you're uninjured, untouched whole. And that is all that matters right now. However, there was one thing you remember clearly. And that is that someone yanked your arm and pulled you into reality. Dude, who now stands before you, stares at you with dread in his eyes. What's the matter, dude? Did we run out of juice? He doesn't react to your words. He grabs his head, his dreadful stare glued to the floor. Ugh, oh, I've made a terrible mistake, terrible. It's not supposed to be like this, man. Calm down, dude. Take a deep breath and try to compose yourself. Man, man, man. He looks you dead in the eye. I can't calm down. I'm so like, freaking out right now. I instantly felt something was wrong as soon as I stepped into the rift. There is this feeling that we have strayed from the vision. All of this, like, right now. We're not supposed to be here. Don't you get it? This is not part of the vision anymore. This is the unforeseen reality. Everything is wrong. Everything. I made the juice wrong. In the place we're in, we're not supposed to be here. I felt it when we were in the in-between. Stomach, sickness, thirst, headache. It was like a bunch of construction workers were using sledgehammers as pogo sticks on top of my head. Ugh. The juice was running out, man. I had to pull us out of there, or else... Oh, I don't even want to think about that. I just saw that streaming light, and... Here we are. Maybe all this was foretold in the vision? No, man. This has nothing to do with the vision. I know it otherwise, because things like... I know it, okay? We're screwed, man. We gotta get out of here now. This is not a part of the vision, man. You cited that recipe back then with a lot of confidence. Do you think you remembered it wrong, or did you just mix it wrong? I don't know, man. Everything seemed right when I made it. it felt right when I drank it. But it didn't work. He shrugs. I don't know why. Do you know where we are? It looks like a military base or something like that. He takes a look at one of the stacked crates next to him. These look like weapon crates, man. I've never seen these markings and these letters. Statro Grom, what? What language is this, man? Whatever. All I know is we're toast if they find us here. So how do we get out of here? I don't. I don't like. Wait, wait. I gotta think. Gotta think. He closes his eyes and put his fingers on his temples. After rubbing his temples for a couple of seconds, breathing evenly and humming a simple and calming melody, he opens his eyes and looks at you. Now, you might consider what I'm about to say, like you know. A little strange, odd, weird, outrageous. Say nothing. He takes a deep breath. We're gonna need some oil. Oil. Now, now that I thought about what happened, I don't think we actually ran out of juice. I think it's still in our systems, but that it for some reason stopped affecting us enough to like, allow us to rift walk safely. It's not running well. Therefore we need a way to get it moving around somehow. And what is the best way to jumpstart the latent juice? Drink some more juice? No. We need to lube it up so that it can circulate properly. We need mineral oil. Isn't that used to treat constipation? 
Yes, it is. The mineral oils do not get absorbed by the large intestines. How is it going to get into the bloodstream? Look, man, it doesn't have to get in the bloodstream. It just works, okay? I just led you through a hole in the universe, and you're busting my chops about mineral oil. Man, like, man. Fine. What kind of mineral oil do we need? Whatever kind of mineral oil you find, you, you, you bring to me, okay? Once I see it, I'll figure out whether it's going to work or kill us. Remember, man, there is no vision to fall back to anymore. We're alone. Just keep your eyes peeled, your mind clearer, your bowels tight. He nods. Good luck. Go get that mineral oil. I'll be here, hiding. I'm on it, dude. Mineral oil. And everyone, welcome to the Grey Army base. We will do this area in the next episode. So I'll see you guys then. Take care, everyone. Thanks for watching.